Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming on. So, I've got an update for you guys on this massive, severe weather event that we've got unfolding across the North Central Plains today. And I just want to let you guys know that I really apologize for not being able to upload um, consistently in the last week, in the last uh, begin, in the beginning of this week. And I just want to let you guys know that it's just because I've had so much activities. So many activities and so much baseball going on that it's been really tough to get that free time to be able to do one of these 30-minute videos for you guys. But I'm going to keep grinding, and I'm, I'm telling you guys, I'm trying my best out here. So I'm going to really hope that I can make it a l change a little bit this week and I can get back on track. So, you know, I just want to let you guys know also that yesterday, if you didn't know already, we had a massive, and uh, this was a deathly flood event. Yeah, that we had in the northeast we had catastrophic flooding out here i mean i'm on long island so we only got about an inch of rain but you know you guys in like the catskills the poconos and the appalachians you guys saw devastating flooding throughout the entire region but i mean i'm kind of surprised though that the mountainous regions got the most amount of rainfall from this but people almost saw one foot uh, worth of rainfall and the streets were covered in mud and you know flood water flood waters and I mean I'm lucky because you know where I live I was under a level four out of five for flash flooding um for I believe Sunday and we just got missed but you know there was devastating flooding in upstate New York uh n northern New Jersey northern Pennsylvania parts of Connecticut um, and almost New York City. I think New York City, uh, some parts of New York City got a little bit of, uh, a little bit flooded. But the main, uh, event was definitely in Vermont. You guys in northern Vermont got slammed with inches of rain. I'm talking like, you know, six, seven, eight inches of rain. And the most rain that, you know, any town or city got topped off with was about, Ten and a half inches of rain, which is almost a foot of rainfall. So it is crazy and incredibly bad to see that much rainfall. But you know the reason why we see that is because we had you know that drought earlier in the summer season, um, where all this moisture and this rainfall builds up, and then once we see that quick snap with that pattern change, it allows all these storms to enter the eastern U.S. And we just had one of those stalled low pressure systems that, you know, kind of flew out into the northeast and they just stalled right over us and it just dropped in a ridiculous amount of rain in two days. But it was crazy and it was scary for everyone in the northeast. But we saw severe storms. We saw, you know, some people actually saw some hail. Now we also did have that flooding. But, you know, for now, we're just going to be talking about kind of the details on what happened yesterday, and also the obviously the forecast for today. Uh, but we've got some storminess out here across parts of southern, um, southern Arkansas, parts of northeastern Texas, and also parts of northern Louisiana. So watch out for some afternoon storms. Some storms could fly through the fly through the region, um, bring some lightning and maybe some downpours out there. But we also do have some pretty intense rainfall across. The Dakotas, now this is going to be pushing eastward and then turn into a kind of a severe weather event that we're going to be talking about today. It's not supposed to be too bad, but it could definitely get pretty intense, and a few of these storms will be severe, so got to watch out for that. But we're going to be moving on to our alerts, and you can see that what we've got going on is you've got a heat advisory for all almost all of Texas. I mean, it's been it's still been so hot out there in Texas. We still do kind of have a heat dome out in the western US. Um, but I just want to, you know, take a look, stop it here, stop the video here and just take a look at how many how many like states, counties and just places there are included in heat watches, warnings and advisories. We've got heat watch for almost all of Texas, we have a heat watch for all of eastern Kansas, um, a lot of southwestern Missouri, some parts of southern Florida. Um, and then we have this excessive heat warning for all of southern Nevada, a lot of western Arizona, and then parts of southern California. So this is a just a huge deal. You know, and when you hear heat, like just like really extreme heat, you don't really think 
that it's it's that big of a deal compared to severe weather. But I mean, we're talking highs in the upper, you know, like approaching 110 degrees and then into the upper 110s. It's brutally hot out there. And we're going to continue seeing this for the next few days. But we have a uh, excessive heat watch for stretching from parts of Northern California down into uh, the coastal regions of California. So it is actually a little bit uh, hotter and warmer near the coast. Um, And then once you get to like, I don't know if this is like the San Francisco area um, or, you know, just wherever this is, but you know, I guess you could just say that this would be southeastern California, but you do see that excessive heat warning because those temperatures are getting into that um, 100 degree range. So we're going to be moving on to our temperatures because we don't really have any other alerts for now. And you can see that, you know, for our highs today, you're in the hundreds for most of you guys in the southern U.S. Um, we start out at Florida in the southeast. You guys should be in the 80s. Um, and if you're a little bit closer to the Gulf Coast, you may see um, some people hit 90 degrees, maybe a little higher. You can see along the northern uh, areas of Florida, uh, southern areas of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. You're touching 94, 95 degrees, so maybe getting into those mid-90s for you guys. Uh, we go out west, we're going to switch it to 8 p.m. because that's kind of where the sun is up. Um, like that's midday for you guys, um, because this is 8 p.m. Eastern time. Um, but you do see though that you have pretty much 110 degrees for all of southeastern California. You can see 108 right here. This pink and this like white, this is like 105 plus degree heat out here. But you can see, you know, what I mean about all of central Texas, all, all of Texas being included in that heat. He, uh, excessive heat watch, well, or I think it's just a heat watch, but, you know, you see here that you not only have the entire state in that watch, but you also have on the temperature map, you're, everyone is in the hundreds, except some pe- some of you guys up here will get into the upper 90s, but not quite touch 100, 100 degrees, but I would not be surprised if, you know, pretty much all of Texas hit 100 degrees today. There is a little pocket of cooler air out here with well below average temperatures just around the DFW area um, and you're in the 70s so it is very very nice out Um, actually you know there might be some humidity out there that's going to make the uh, air the air kind of feel sticky Um, but otherwise it's going to be very very nice out for you guys. Um, You guys in the central and northern plains if you go way into North Dakota you're in the 50s it's going to be pretty chilly tonight you know, especially tonight, because this is, you know, 8 p.m., um, but you see, if you're farther north, you're probably going to stay in the 70s, maybe some of you will get in the 80s, and then um, you'll also see uh, the 60s for some of you guys in the central plains, you're going to be in the upper 80s and lower 90s, maybe some of you could get into the mid-90s, but I don't think anyone in the central plains is going to get 100, unless you're closer down to Texas. Um, you guys in the uh, Mid Atlantic, you're going to be in the uh, mostly just the lower and mid 80s. Some of you could get to 90 degrees. Same thing for you guys in the Northeast. Um, but if you're up in, near Maine and those areas that are still seeing some of that rainfall from the stalled low that we that that uh, brought us the the flooding rainfall, some of you guys will actually be in the 70s and 60s for today. Um, and then. Lastly, for you guys in the north northwest U.S., um, you do have some pockets of cold air that have been bringing below average temperatures, but otherwise, it's been fairly nice. Um, I know the uh, MLB home home run derby just took place yesterday. It looked beautiful outside, and then we also do have the MLB All Star game. So, um, you know, tune in for that if you're a sports fan. I know I'm a huge baseball fan, so I'm obviously going to be watching that tonight, but. You know, if you if any of you happen to be going to the game, well, it's going to be very very nice outside with temperature around seventy degrees. So we're going to be moving on to our uh, breakdown of what happened yesterday and kind of just last weekend. So we're going to be starting out on the first day of this very very intense round of storms. So I know it says um, July tenth, which says Monday, but this was um the so this was. The day one outlook for Sunday, which was the first day of this very, very intense round of storms. 
And so you could see we're up to a moderate risk for flash flooding, which is at least 40% of, um, you know, flash, of flash flooding, um, rainfall, risk of rain. It's in a, it's, uh, 40, it's in at least 40% percentage of rain, of a risk of rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance within 25 miles of a point. So, you know, this was including areas like pretty much all of Vermont, few areas of western New Hampshire, down into parts of southern and upstate New York. And then you also do see a lot of eastern uh, PA. You guys were included in that. I believe Philadelphia, you guys were in that as well. A lot of northern and central New Jersey. This was including parts of uh, Long Island. Um, it was including New York City. Uh, down into the Delmarva area, uh, parts of Delaware. Um, I believe you guys were in that as well, but you know, not in the entire state was included in that. So pretty lucky for that. Then for the surrounding areas, you have a slight, you had a slight risk, um, including the central areas of uh, PA, up, well upstate New York, and areas farther off to the east. Now this was for sun, Sunday. So this was when that storm arrived. It arrived around, you know, mid-afternoon on Sunday. Then those don't, you know, the, that rainfall just kept pouring and pouring on over in the overnight hours and you started seeing that terrible flooding but it was at night so some people not all not everyone was expecting the flooding because you know it was at night so they they figured that it'd just be you know just one of those rainstorms that bring a lot of rain at night but it turned out to actually be so bad that it washed away a few homes um but then we go to uh, the next day, which was yesterday, this was Monday. Um, and so let me click here, and you can see that you're up to a high risk. Now, uh, what a high risk is? It's at least seventy percent of a uh, risk of flash flooding exceeding flash or of rainfall exceeding flash flood guidance, twenty five miles of, within twenty five miles of a point. And this is, I'm telling you guys, this is not something we see. Um, like every week, this is not something we see every month. We probably see this like once a year. So this is very, very uh, scary to see a high risk out for flash flooding. And this is precisely for northern Vermont and parts of northwestern, extreme northwestern New York State. Um, then we had a moderate risk of flash flooding just outside of that high risk, including parts of northern New Hampshire. Uh, the surrounding areas of Vermont, not quite southern Vermont, actually. I think this is including a lot of southern Vermont. So pretty much all of Vermont, and then a lot of upstate New York, and this go. And then you got a slight risk um, that goes down into parts of southern, a little like central New York State, down into parts of southern New York State, including um, northwestern Massachusetts, parts of Maine. Um, but it was just crazy out, and you know when we saw this high risk. Um, that was issued, we all, everyone knew, or at least everyone should have known that something bad was going to happen right in the middle of that high risk, and something did happen. We had roads that got literally wiped out and washed away because of how intense that rainfall was, and we had feet of, feet of rainwater on the roads. It was terrible yesterday, such a terrible sight, um, but we're going to be moving on to our Namthricam model for the North Central, um, just after I discuss that for you guys. I just want to let you guys know how bad that actually was. And I'm, I greatly apologize that I did not do any um, video on that. I did post a short, so go out and watch that. It's, in the, uh, li it's down in the link in the comments below. Um, but, you know, I, I, really, I greatly apologize for that. And I'll make sure if it happens again, I'll definitely be more prepared for you guys. But... You know, we look at the NAM 3K model for North Central, and we're back at where we are today. This was 9 a.m. this morning. You had some thunderstorm action out here in northwestern North Dakota. This has been this storm has been producing some hail um, as of late this morning, but now we're at about you know 2:30 in the afternoon, so we'll bring this to like two o'clock. So you still have some more scattered thunderstorm action, uh, uh, very free and. No, I don't know why this is out here, but there is a uh, damaging wind line that has been moving out of Michigan, and this is moving over 
um, the Great Lakes, so they should probably lose steam just about now. Um, and then here comes your first round of storms tonight. You have some storms entering South Dakota, mainly North Dakota, though. There is a high-pressure center battling right over it, but then we will see a low-pressure center try and take over this. Now, the stronger storms is basically what this storm is going to – our thing for the storm is going to be is we're going to have to say the later it is, the stronger the storms. Because you see we go all the way until 10 p.m., and you're still not seeing the strongest of storms, but you're – you are seeing more intensification with these storms um, that are impacting parts of southeastern South Dakota, parts of northern um, Nebraska. But, you know, we continue playing this throughout the night. We're in the middle of the night, and that's where you start seeing um, that pretty intense rainfall. And this is probably where you're going to start seeing those severe thunderstorms come in with that lightning, those damaging wind gusts, those gusty winds, and that small hail. Um, it could get large though. Could you could see it hail up to two inches in diameter? Um, but I mean, look at this. All this pink. This is where the hail threat's going to be highest. It's definitely going to be here. So we're going to stop it right around three a.m. in the morning. So I really think, um, based off looking, based on looking at, based off of looking at what the NAM three K M model is saying, I think three a.m. is when you're going to start hearing those ping pong balls hitting your roof. But um. You know, if I had to put one hour on the money for how much, you know, what hour we're going to see the most hail in, I, it's definitely going to be 3 a.m. Because, you know, every other hour um, you go to 4 a.m., it's still you still see that hail threat. It's just not near doesn't look as nearly as impressive as what it looks what's what it's going to look like at 3 a.m. But, you know, we finally see this damaging wind threat start, you know, building up. And because you can see this line of storms is now bending out. Um, so you could tell that those winds coming up from the south are kind of bending the storm apart. Um, and then it's only going to last a few hours, not until probably it's going to fall apart until not until 6 a.m. Um, and then 7 a.m. You do have a scat a bit of, you know, just a, three areas of scattered um, uh, strong thunderstorm activity out here. But, you know, we're going to have three couplets of storms. We have uh, one branch of storms up here in southwestern North Dakota, one out here in uh, eastern Nebraska, and then, uh, you know, this is the, probably going to be the main bunch of storms, which will be impacting um, parts of eastern Iowa, parts of southwestern Wisconsin, and parts of northeast northwestern um, Illinois, and this could also impact the Chicago area as well, so watch out for that. Um, but then we start seeing this storm action falling apart. So your main your main storm line st it starts to fall apart around 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. So you kind of you're going to be waking up if you're in Chicago. You're going to be waking up to some rumbles of thunder and maybe some rainfall out there. Um, but then it's quickly going to diminish. Um, but then maybe a second round of storms could enter your area. You can see that we may even have a rotating supercell out here just based on the NAM. I mean, this is not a radar, but, um, you know, we could definitely see some rotating thunderstorms out there in the, the Chicago area. But those will find those will just, you know, kind of move off to the east away from you guys, and they will slowly diminish once you get into those afternoon hours. Um, and then they're pretty much going to behave the same way as, the storms behind them are going to this uh, farther north one and the farther south one. This one down here impacting parts of south southeastern um, Nebraska will it will go into uh, parts of northern um, Missouri. So we gotta watch out for some of those uh, thunderstorms that could produce some fairly large hail out there if you're on the border of Kansas and Missouri. Um, and then they're pretty much all the storms that are left except. Um, these storms uh, and rain showers out here um, closer to Wisconsin and Michigan. But, you know, we will see some more this line, uh, some more of this storm action um, go down deeper into parts of the south central U.S., southern plains, um, but then it'll quickly just diminish once you get into the evening hours of tomorrow. So that was round one. We go to round two, um, and here you go again. You got another line of storms um, from pretty much that same area in Missouri, except it's a little bit farther off to the west. So some more of you guys in um, southeastern Kansas could see some of the storm action, but you'd have to be in like 
you know, the middle of the night of tomorrow night. Um, and we get into the early morning hours of, I guess this would be uh, Thursday. Um, and you still see the, uh, you know, the storm off going off to the east, impacting parts of upstate New York. So pretty much all you're going to be left with with the second round of storms is this uh, bunch of storms out here in upstate New York moving off to the east. And then this line of storms moving down from parts of Missouri into parts of Kansas and Arkansas. So it's not going to be too, too bad. You only got a slight risk up. So it's kind of telling you that, you know, there is definitely a chance for severe weather tonight. It's not going to be that high, though. And um, you just got to watch out for some scattered damaging hailstorms and then maybe some damaging wind gusts in the mix with that. So we're going to be moving on to our storm prediction center. You can see that you got the slight risk out here for parts of uh, southwestern Montana. This is for today. So, you know, when you see Montana, you'd think that, you know, why why didn't I include it in the video? That's just because that, you know, you guys are, you guys were the first ones to see it. As you can see, you guys are pretty much the uh, ones fought, you know, the most extreme western areas, including this slight risk. But this stretches down into parts of northeastern Wyoming, into parts of uh, western and southern South Dakota, a lot of eastern um, Nebraska, and then also a lot of western Iowa. Um, and then the tornado threat for today, um, it's pretty much the same area as that slight risk, a little bit smaller though, only a 2% risk for tornadoes. I don't think we're going to see any tornadoes today. It's a possibility though that you could have some rotating thunderstorms. Um, and the wind threat, probably the main threat of today, you'd have a hatch risk with a 15% risk uh, right in the middle of north northeastern Nebraska and parts of western Iowa. So watch out for some damaging wind gusts tonight. Same thing for that hail threat, except it's a bit bigger. So maybe we'll have more of that hail threat than that wind threat tonight. Um, but you can see it's pretty that's pretty much the exact same area as the um, slight risk. So um, we're going to be moving on to our day two threat, our day two outlook, I should say. And you are up to a slight risk. So when you see a huge area in a slight risk um, and it's covering a very big area with a lot of pop with a lot of largely populated areas, you could see an enhanced risk with this. Um, personally, I don't expect this. I don't expect to have uh, this upgraded into an enhanced risk. But this is that same area we saw with those with that those two lines of thunderstorms going down into parts of Kansas and Missouri right here. You got Kansas City along the line here, Jefferson City, uh, St. Louis, Missouri. You guys are right in the middle of that. Um, Hannibal, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, Pedroia, Illinois, and parts of uh, um, southern Illinois, including Springfield, Illinois. Um, tomorrow's wind threat, 15% risk, including the hatch risk. Um, so you will definitely see um, some of that some of those damaging wind gusts tomorrow, that's definitely possible. It's pretty much the same area as that slight risk. Um, and same thing for the hail threats, except it's a little bit further west and it's smaller, including that exact area we were talking about of western Missouri and parts of northeastern Kansas. So we're just going to be looking at the tropics for the last part of the video. And I know we haven't looked at the tropics lately because they've been pretty quiet, which is a good sign. Um, but... You know, just to get kind of give you guys the visual right now. Um, so basically what we have is we have a lot of wind shear down here um, in the Lesser Antilles, kind of that area where we saw uh, Tropical Storm Brett and Tropical Storm Cindy. Uh, but we do have a 30% ri uh, risk of development, uh, tropical development up here in the northern Atlantic. This is just um, a few hundred miles, several hundred miles northeast of Bermuda. B Bermuda. Um, but I'll read you guys what we've got right now. So for the Central Atlantic, an area of low pressure is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms several hundred, several, several hundred miles east-northeast of Bermuda. Environmental conditions are forecasted to be marginally conductive for some development of the system, and a subtropical or tropical depression could form in the next few days while the system moves generally eastward. So um, I'm going to stop right there. When you heard that, you know, there's a chance for uh, tropical or subtropical development. I don't think that this is going to be uh, going, you know, going all the way into a tropical storm. I think if it does form a depression, it, you know, it has, it may, might have a shot at getting a low end tropical storm 
Um, but I think it quite possibly could get a name. Um, but we still don't know that yet. It's still way too far out to kind of know and kind of forecast. But, you know, I'm just telling you guys that there is a chance for tropical development. It just looks unlikely that it's going to get to a uh, considered strong status. But, you know, you have, uh, you have um, the low that will the, the the low will turn northward bringing the system over cooler waters by the weekend so we will have uh, cooler waters um kind of where this storm is going to be by the weekend um and then uh it will like it will likely limit the additional development chances for this so that's also another reason why we won't see that we probably won't see a tropical storm or well we'll definitely not see a hurricane we can get that out of the picture but you know, that's why we'll probably not see a tropical storm. So we have uh, a 30% chance of formation throughout the next 48 hours, and we have a uh, 50% chance of formation through the next seven days. So we could definitely see um, this get a little bit higher. So we could see a 60%, maybe even 70% of formation in the next seven days. We just don't know that yet, and we got to keep watching this. So that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for coming to watch. And um, have a great day. Stay safe out there. Um, I know some of these roads are still flooded out there in Vermont. Um, but I'll talk to you guys soon. Um, and have a great day. So we'll see you guys in the next video. And have a great day. And have a great rest of your week.